friends, um, welcome to Home Economics in my home. Uh, today we are going to be making a chocolate syrup that we can then use to make chocolate milk or hot chocolate. What we're going to do is we're going to make it, we're going to cool it down, um, and then I'm going to show you how to store it or how to use it to make hot chocolate or chocolate milk. And this is something that's pretty easy to do. It uses a very small number of ingredients and uh, you could even try following along with this video. So, as those of you who come to Home Ec know, we always start before we cook anything by washing our hands. So I'm gonna go to the sink now and do just that. First, I'm going to tell you the ingredients that you need to get. You're going to need some white sugar, some cocoa powder, some vanilla, some salt, and some water. We're going to start with our cocoa powder. And you can see how beautiful it looks inside there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to strain it through a strainer like this, and that's going to make sure that all the lumps get out. I don't know if you saw, but it's pretty lumpy. So I'm going to measure half a cup of this cocoa powder. And I'm using a spoon rather than dipping my measuring cup in the cocoa powder because the container is pretty narrow and it would be a little tricky. So now I'm going to put the cocoa powder into my sieve. Whoop. And it's not all going to fit at once, so don't worry about that. You can pour it as you go, or if you use a bigger sieve, then you can pour it all at once. And don't worry too much if some goes over the side of the sieve and doesn't get in, um, doesn't get passed through the little sieve bits. So I'm going to swirl my spoon around to help all the cocoa powder get through. And what that's doing is you can see it's going into like a nice little powder and that's going to make it easier to mix. So I'm going to put the rest of my cocoa powder in. It makes a great sound too. It's kind of like you are making kitchen music. So that's that. One half cup of cocoa powder. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put in one cup of water, and this water is cold. And you can see here that my measuring cup is full to two cups. So I'm gonna go from that two cups down to that one cup. If you want, you can just fill your measuring cup to just one cup. And the best way to make sure that you've got exactly the right measure in your measuring cup is to put it down on a flat surface and then to kneel down so that you can see and your eyes are right in line with the measure. So we're going to try that and measure one cup of water into our cocoa. Oh, we have a little bit more that we can put in. Perfect. So now I'm going to take this whisk, my one half cup of cocoa powder and one cup of water, and I'm going to mix it together until all of it is dissolved. This might take a little while because the cocoa powder, as you can see, it's a little bit dry and it doesn't really want to go into the water. But we're getting it eventually and look at that. And you have like a beautiful chocolate mess. So the next thing that we're going to do is head over to the stove and put it on. So I've got my stove on medium heat. 
my stove is a gas stove, so it has fire, but probably your stove is using electricity. That's fine. Whatever your stove says is medium, that is the right amount of heat. And because my stove is gas, it's gonna go really, really quickly. And it might take a little bit longer on your stove, so just be patient. And I'm gonna use this beautiful spatula, mine has polka dots, and I'm going to just keep stirring the whole time. And I don't know if you can see, but what I'm doing is I'm using the edge of the spatula to go around the edge of the pot. So in case any chocolate gets splashed up like that, you can see it gets splashed up, I can just scrape it down so that it doesn't burn. What I'm also doing is making sure that this part of the spatula, the flat bit, is going against the bottom so that nothing is sticking to the bottom and burning either. And I'm gonna stir pretty constantly until it comes to a simmer. And if you've been in home ec before, you know that there are three kinds of things that water does um, when we're cooking with it. We can use water to poach, we can use water to simmer, and we can use water to boil. A boil is the easiest one. When something is boiling, it's got big, big bubbles that are popping through the surface, and usually it makes some kind of a noise. When something is poaching, the water, or if we're using another kind of liquid to poach, is getting just little tiny bubbles that start off on the bottom of the pot and work their way up to the top, but they're not breaking, they're just kind of coming up to float. When something is simmering, there are lots of little bubbles on the bottom that are coming up to the top. And they're not big bubbles yet, and only about half of them are breaking the surface. And what that means is that when the bubble, the little bit of water gets to the top of the water, it pops. So when they're boiling, it pops and they're really big. We don't want it to get quite there. We want it to get to just simmering. So if you look, you can see that our chocolate has some little bubbles that are just coming. You can see them kind of bubbling a little bit. Yeah, so it's just about to boil. So I'm gonna turn my stove off. Now, this is very important. Because I have a gas stove, as soon as I turn it off, it stops being hot. But on your electric stove, if you have an electric stove, it's gonna keep being hot. So if you have an electric stove, you have to take your pot off the stove and put it on a trivet. Um, a, this trivet is made of cork. There are lots of them made of lots of different materials, but it's basically something to protect your counter from getting burned. So into this beautiful chocolate mixture, I'm gonna take my sugar. This is one cup of white sugar, and I'm just gonna pour it in. And then I'm gonna stir until all the sugar gets dissolved. And because this chocolate is hot, 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 the sugar is gonna dissolve really, really quickly. So I've got one cup of sugar, and I'm also gonna use an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Now, this is one teaspoon. And I only have a quarter teaspoon. That's as small as my set goes. If you have an eighth of a teaspoon, that's the one you wanna use. But if you're like me and you only have a quarter teaspoon, what you can do is go into your salt and take about half of that quarter teaspoon and put it and you might be thinking, Jessica, why are we putting salt in our hot chocolate? And while this hot chocolate is getting more cooked, I'm gonna turn it back on to medium again. I am gonna tell you why we want salt. So salt is like magic for food. Not only is salt really good at preserving things, which if you've been to home ec before, you know a lot about. Salt is also really good at making things taste more like themselves. So in here, in this chocolate, what the salt is gonna do, it's gonna trick our taste buds into believing that it tastes extra chocolatey. I don't know how it works. I just know that it does. So anytime that you're cooking and something doesn't taste quite right, 
the first question that you should ask is, does it have enough salt? And you'd be surprised what adding just a little bit of salt can do. Of course, if something has too much salt, that's a whole other problem. So my chocolate is simmering now, and I'm gonna let it simmer for three minutes. Our chocolate has simmered for three minutes, and it's looking really, really good. So the last thing that I'm gonna add to it is vanilla. And um, the reason that I'm gonna add vanilla is because vanilla has some of the same, what we call flavor compounds. Some of the same ones in chocolate are also in vanilla. So there are some two other things that also share some of the same flavor compounds, the same taste chemicals as chocolate, coffee and cinnamon. So if you wanted to make this chocolate sauce super duper chocolatey, you could make it instead of with cold water, with cold coffee, you could add a little bit of cinnamon. But I don't really like coffee, so I made mine with water. I'm gonna add three quarters of a teaspoon of vanilla. Now I don't have a three quarter teaspoon measure, but I do have a half a teaspoon, and I do have a quarter of a teaspoon. And I know that a half is made up of two quarters. So with these two quarters here, and this one quarter here, I have three quarters. So I'm gonna measure one half teaspoon of vanilla very carefully. And I'm also gonna measure one quarter teaspoon of vanilla very carefully. And then I'm gonna mix it together. Now, the thing that you want to do if you're going to be using this to make chocolate milk is you want to get it cold because if you can imagine putting really hot chocolate syrup in a glass of cold milk, it's just gonna get you warm chocolate. and Nobody likes that. And if you want to use it later and you don't wanna use it today, you're also gonna to wanna to cool it before you put it in the fridge because otherwise something hot going straight into your fridge is gonna make your fridge warmer and that's not cool. So leaving it in the pot, which is hot itself, is not the best option. A good way to cool something off quickly is to put it into another container. And this other container is shallower, so it's not as tall, and it's longer. So what's happening here is that there's more surface of the chocolate that's touching the air to get cool. So I'm gonna pour my chocolate into this container. Oh wow, that looks really good. And I'm gonna scrape using my spatula to make sure that I get all of the chocolate out. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it here for hmm, probably 15 or 20 minutes and stirring it can help. But while that's sitting there, I'm going to do the most important part of cooking. And if you've been to Home Ec, you absolutely know what this is. The most important part of cooking is doing the dishes. If you are making hot chocolate, you do not have to worry about cooling your chocolate down. Um, I'm going to make hot chocolate that's going to go in this beautiful mug with my trusty pot. Now what I have here is a one ounce ladle and I'm gonna need two of these. Now two ounces is the same as one quarter cup. So if you're using, using a measuring cup, you can dip your measuring cup in and that's one quarter cup or one quarter cup is the same as four tablespoons. So you could take your tablespoon and go four times. But I'm gonna use my one ounce and go twice because I want two ounces, which is the same as one quarter cup or the same as four tablespoons. So in here with my beautiful one quarter cup, I am going to put one cup of milk. Now, again, you can measure with a measuring cup that's one cup, but since I already have my ladle here, I am going to measure eight ladles full. One, and this is gonna make enough hot chocolate 
for one really big mug or two regular size mugs. So all I have to do once I've put these together is just stir them and then put them on the stove until they are as hot as I want them to be. So I'll show you what it looks like in the mug. All right, so now I'm gonna take my hot chocolate and pour it into my mug and then I have to taste it. Oh, that's really delicious. Oh, that's very good. Ooh, oh, that's nice. Now I'm gonna show you how to make cold chocolate. And this is even easier. So I have my glass, this has Batman on it. DC, don't sue me. And I'm gonna use my one ounce ladle again. And I'm only gonna measure one because this glass is a little bit smaller. So one ounce is the same as two tablespoons. So if you've got a tablespoon, you can just put two. And I'm gonna pour that into the glass. Look how beautiful that is. And then I'm gonna put in four ounces of milk. Now four ounces is the same as one half cup. So if you're using a measuring cup, just pour half a cup in. So you'll notice if you're paying attention, that this is the same proportions as the hot chocolate. So whether it's hot chocolate or cold chocolate, you want one ounce of chocolate to every four ounces of milk, or, and this is a little bit easier, one quarter cup of chocolate for every cup of milk. And so then you just need to take a spoon and stir it Sometimes it's easier if you look on the bottom to make sure that you're getting all of that chocolatey goodness. And if you want, you don't even have to make this in each glass. You could make um, a big jug of it and have chocolate milk for everybody. All right. Oh, that's also very nice cold. I think we're doing a good job. So the last thing that I want to show you is how to deal with the rest of this chocolate sauce that you've made. So this syrup is great because you make it one time and it makes a whole lot and then you can put it in the fridge and anytime you want to make hot chocolate or chocolate milk, it's super easy. I find using a syrup is a lot faster than using a powder for making it dissolve without getting any lumps. Um, and also, since you can make this at home, it's a little bit less expensive. So, I have two jars here, and you could use any jar you want, and I have two just to show you. Um, I'm gonna put mine in a mason jar um, with its nice lid, but if you don't have a mason jar, just any old jar. This one used to have yogurt in it. Um, you could put it in anything that's glass. You could probably put it in something plastic too, um, but if it's at all hot when you put it in, it might melt the plastic and do weird things. So I like to be safe and put it in glass. And this is not really made for pouring, but we're gonna try it anyway. And the reason we can try it anyway is because we have a wonderful tool called a funnel. And uh, that was that. Chocolate syrup that you can use to make hot chocolate or cold chocolate, chocolate milk, for uh, the whole family. And remember, very important things. Always wash your hands before and after, preferably. And if you're using a stove, your mom or dad or older sibling should definitely be there. Um, join me in drinking some hot chocolate now. <laughs>